Hello, I'd like to welcome you to this virtual exhibition of IFEX's Faces of Free Expression. I'm Greg Victor, the founder of the International Free Expression Project. We're presenting Faces of Free Expression in partnership with IFEX, which is a global network of more than 100 free expression organizations. Faces of Free Expression displays the faces and stories of people around the world who have fought to defend your right to speak your mind uh, through art or words or music or in other forms. They represent countless others who are fighting in this global struggle. The Faces exhibit is not only virtual, it's being presented in physical form on the facade of a historic newspaper building in the U.S. city of Pittsburgh. There could not be a more fitting venue on this World Press Freedom Day. There also could not be a more fitting time uh, to present this exhibition. Everywhere you look, authoritarians are on the loose, trying to muzzle the press and silence dissent. In the United States, the police are attacking journalists at protests and they're recalled enemies of the people by politicians. Annie Game, executive director of IFEX, will be up next, and she'll tell you more about the state of free expression in the world at this moment in time. She'll be followed by columnist Tony Norman, who will introduce the indomitable um, Vietnamese singer and free expression activist, Mai Khoi. Before moving on to Annie, I'd like to tell you briefly about the International Free Expression Project. Um, our job is to make noise, uh, to work in high profile ways with organizations like IFEX to stir people in defense of free expression. We have four initiatives that we're pursuing. The first is to build an iconic high tech work of public art symbolizing free expression, one that can be programmed from anywhere in the world to appear as almost anything, from the work of an artist in Brazil to the story of a Saudi journalist murdered by his government. Second, we plan to build in the vast abandoned press room of the newspaper building where Faces is being exhibited, something we're calling a marketplace of ideas, a home for free expression, full of art and music and performance and discussion and education. Third, we simply want to support artists by commissioning and exhibiting their work. And fourth, we want to help create new immersive educational tools. Uh, to learn more, please go to ifep.io. Thank you so much for your interest in free expression and the Faces of Free Expression exhibit. Thank you to IFEX, our partner in this venture. And thank you to all those who made this exhibit possible. Thank you most of all to the courageous people who fight for free expression every day, who fight for your right to speak your mind, like those represented in this Faces of Free Expression exhibit. And now, Annie Gain. Hello, I'm Annie Gain, the Executive Director of IFEX. IFEX is a global network of over 100 organizations in more than 70 countries who defend and promote freedom of expression and access to information. Our work at the IFEX Secretariat is to make meaningful connections and harness the energy and experience of the members to meet the challenges in advocating for these foundational rights. Allies are key in supporting these efforts, and IFEX is very happy this year to be working with the International Free Expression Project to honor some of the remarkable people in our Faces of Free Expression series. Their stories are the stories of risk takers, of change makers, individuals who put their careers, their freedom, their safety, and sometimes even their lives on the line in order to defend these rights. Whether working to secure our right to information, strengthen and defend civic space, make it safer for journalists to do their work, or ensure accountability when crimes are committed against freedom of expression, their tenacity and sacrifice remain an inspiration. You'll often hear now people refer to journalists as working on the front lines. 
The term implies risk, and with reason. As seen in Myanmar, Belarus, Venezuela, and the United States, journalists are reporting on individuals challenging power, calling out crime and corruption and demanding change, and journalists are paying a huge price. Take Daphne Karuna Galitza, a brilliant Maltese investigative journalist who unearthed such corruption and rot among those in power that threats to her life became a common occurrence. In her last blog post, she wrote, There are crooks everywhere you look now. The situation is desperate. She was right. In 2017, Daphne was murdered. A car bomb. Her death ignited a global campaign led by her sons and resulted in a public inquiry and a trail of revelations leading straight to the masterminds behind her murder. And so this work continues until justice can finally be declared for Daphne. In closing, I want to emphasize that the faces you will see and the people you will read about in this exhibition are just a few in a much larger community of individuals and organizations around the world, those whose stories you may never hear. They promote and defend all our rights, often below the radar and far too often in extremely difficult circumstances. We also honor them with this campaign. As a network, IFEX has learned how collaboration can help to change minds, change laws, and sometimes even move mountains. The International Free Expression Project marks another important step in the right direction. We wish you good luck in your good work. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Tony Norman, columnist for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, and I'm the president of the National Society of Newspaper Columnists and a member of the International Free Expression Project's board of directors. As we watch more and more governments kill, jail, beat, persecute, and prosecute journalists, writers, artists, filmmakers, bloggers, and nonconformists of every stripe, we see that this is a moment in history when we all must take a stand in defense of free expression. I'd like to introduce you to someone who has stood up for free expression and suffered for it. The extraordinary Vietnamese singer activist, Mai Khoi, is a member of the Free Expression Project's International Advisory Board. And she happens to be living in exile in Pittsburgh for a while. I understand she has grown to love this city, which is no surprise to me. It's got a lot to love. Let me tell you about Mai Khoi. A few years ago, she was a huge pop star in Vietnam widely compared to Lady Gaga. She lived a glamorous, celebrated life. But she began to chafe under government censorship of her own work and that of other artists. So she turned her celebrity to the cause of democracy and free expression. Now, her role in Vietnam is widely compared to that of Pussy Riot in Russia. Mai Khoi lives the life of a dissident. In Vietnam, she can't play her music in public. She is surveilled, harassed, detained, and interrogated. Her friends are questioned by the authorities. She has been kicked out of her home more than once and chased into hiding by the police. In 2016, Mai Khoi dared to nominate herself as an independent candidate for a seat in the National Assembly. She dared to invite President Barack Obama to meet with civil society activists when he visited Vietnam, which he did. She has become an outspoken critic of Facebook, once a vital outlet of dissonant voices that now has allowed itself to become a powerful tool of government repression. My Khoi's courage is inspiring. She's doing all she can, in the words of Martin Luther King, to bend the arc of the moral universe towards justice. For this, she was awarded the Vaclav Havel International Prize for Creative Dissent. Let us all take up My Khoi's cause. And so it is with deep pleasure and honor to introduce 
the great Mike Hoy. So here is the song that I won song of the year. <laughs> it's called Vietnam. The song is called Vietnam. I wrote this song when I was on the airplane and I looked down. I've seen, I've seen many beautiful landscapes of my country. It was green, it was great, it was full of hope. So I wrote this song. have a full band there will be the solo part and the drum and the bass and, <laughs> and everything the strings but I play this song by myself so now I'm gonna sing you the song that I wrote after I've met with President Obama that was um, that was very excited from the beginning, but then very disappointed because after the meeting, we didn't get anything. I will sing you this song, the song called Just Be Patient. That's what? Obama told me in the meeting. <laughs> Before you came, I dreamt of you. You with your power to make right for you I put myself on the line for you I was prepared to do time all around I go standing Serpent snakes and deadly creatures wanna catch me, kill me, burn me. Mm I saw your halo shining bright Then you gave me some advice Just be patient Just 
Just be patient. 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 Just be Thank you. Again, thank you everyone for your interest in protecting the right of free expression and the Faces of Free Expression exhibition. Thank you to those who took part in this virtual opening event. Annie Game, Tony Norman, and especially Mai Khoi. To lend a hand to the cause, please visit the International Free Expression Project website at ifep.io or the IFEX site at ifex.org. You also can track our activities on social media. Please help us. Let's make noise. <laughs>